screen. Back in to do another uh, video commentary on the Real Housewives of New York. Um, thanks to um, Project Spare Time, um, I've caught up with uh, episodes 15, I think 14, 15, six, and 16. I watched all those episodes and um, um, as you guys all probably already know, all the girls, um, Ramona, um, Sonia, Heather, Carol, um, Aviva, <laughs> all went to St. Bart's. Um, however, uh, Aviva didn't get to St. Bart's until like, a, a, it appears two days before they were due to depart and it looks like all the other girls had already been there um, prior to her and it looks like um, in episode 15 14 and 15 it looks like they're all having a ball they're going out on yachts they going out and partying having a good time of course as y'all all saw uh, <laughs> Ramona and Sonia um, when those two get together and get to partying I mean they let all their hair down I mean they don't no, they don't hold nothing back when it comes to having a good time. And especially if they are away on vacation. I mean, they just let go of all of their uh, inhibitions. Anyway, Luann, on the other hand, Miss, um, I'm the Countess. And I know I'm the epitome of elegance. And I know proper etiquette and how you should behave. And, you know, and goes out to a club meets a really handsome Johnny Depp look like named Tomas and um, evidently from what Heather says brought him back to the house and you know they did the you know what anyway the following day Heather tells every you know tells Ramona and those guys that you know last night you know uh, Ramona came back home and she had a uh, Tomas in the room and it, I think they had sex and of course naturally Ramona is, isn't gonna let this go she's just got to question um, uh, Luann and she's I mean Luann looks so did she not look guilty I mean she looked like it was like like a deer caught in headlights like oh my god please don't say anything about that please don't let's not talk about it let's don't say anything you know just you know, I had a couple of Italians in the room last night. I had a couple. Of, I, I brought a couple of Italian friends home. That's all it was. That's all it was. Then she's on the phone talking about, "Don't say you came here last night in French." And then, did y'all see how she was mad dogging Ramona while Ramona was sitting there flirting and talking with Tomas? Dead giveaway. I mean, if they ain't done nothing. If she ain't been intimate with Tomas. She's sitting there mad dogging and watching everything they say I mean it's just was a dead giveaway I don't y'all let me know if I'm right or wrong on that but you could just tell I mean she was just like she just was hoping and praying that he wouldn't confirm that they were together that's why she was mad dogging but anyway what I found disgusting though was Sonia okay even though Sonia didn't have physical proof that Luann had been with Tomas the night before why in the world as she would call it go walking in the garden with Tomas the day after it's been speculated that he was with Luann I mean how disgusting is that I mean who does that I mean OMG anyway Luann, you busted, girlfriend. I mean, you totally look busted. And then on the next episode, you all look hogged up on Jack and stuff at this cooking party and trying to reassure him how much you love him. And, oh, wait a minute, y'all. I digress. Let's go back. I think it was episode 14 where Sonia and Luann had went out to eat. And Luann, uh, Sonia asked Luann about the pregnancy and stuff and if they were going for it and all that. And um, Luann said yes. And she said, so, she goes, are you having this baby because you want to keep Jack? And Luann just was completely honest. She said, yep. She goes, I'm terrified. And the next episode, she said that she was um, terrified of losing Jack. So, she's willing, I mean... Luann, I think it's what, 48, 49? I mean, 50 is knocking on the door for her. I'm 41, and if I got pregnant right now, I would kill myself. I mean, I, there's just no way I would be 
there's just no way. I, I mean, so for her to be near 50, even if she has a lot of money, you know, having babies is a huge responsibility, as she, I'm sure she already knows because she already has two kids. And men sometimes can be very fleeting. I mean, they're here today, you know, and they're gone tomorrow. I mean, you know, men are like, you know, the waves of the sea. They're here and there and they're everywhere. There's no, you know, they, they change direction at whim sometime. And it, as you can see, her count husband kicked her to the curb for some Ethiopian chick you know what I mean so obviously she ain't that elegant and that beautiful I mean she I mean I mean if her husband who was like 15 years older than her left her I mean Jock who is what seven eight years younger than she is can get up and walk away and then she's stuck there by herself trying to figure out how to raise this kid on her own now I'm sure I mean she's Seems like she's, you know, she doesn't have any money problems. So if he did that, I'm sure she could handle it on her own. But just putting herself in a uh, position like that, just so she can keep a man, I'm gonna have a baby. There's so many women out there. I know how to keep. I know how to get. I'm gonna get pregnant and have his baby. You know, then I'll be able to keep him. Luann, having a baby ain't gonna keep no man. If he get tired, sick and tired of you, he'll walk away. He'll walk away. I mean, having a baby's not gonna keep him. So I don't know what the heck she's thinking. So. That's why I think Sonya, you know, when they all went out to dinner and started drinking and stuff and Sonya just straight up told her, you know, I don't want you to hurt her. I don't want her. I, I love her. I care for her. I don't want to see her get hurt. So even though she shouldn't have brought that up right then and there, Luann got the point that, you know, she's only saying, even though she shouldn't have said it, she was basically just saying that out of concern for her friend that she loves and cares for. So, y'all, I, I don't know. I, I, I just really think Luann's making a big mistake. She's... I mean, almost 50, have, thinking of having another kid, and it's just, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's a good idea. Y'all let me know if I'm, you know, if you don't think I'm right or you think I'm wrong on that, let me know. But I just think that's a bad idea. Anyway, so we, let's fast forward back to, okay, okay, let's go back to episode, I think it's episode 15. There's Aviva. And her husband Reed riding the little airport or shuttle to get to the little eight passenger little little not not a commercial jet but one of those eight passenger planes that's going to be taking her and her husband to St. Bart's. Now we all know that Aviva has said in the past that she has anxiety problems. I totally get that, especially. You know, with her leg getting caught in the conveyor belt and, you know, she lost her leg and stuff. I can see what, how she would have some anxieties and stuff. But, something, I mean, y'all, something happened between the time she got on that plane, which I'm assuming is in New York, from the time her and her husband got on the plane, and between the time that her and her husband landed in St. Bart's, this fool lost her mind. I mean, her mind is out in hyperspace somewhere hiding from her. I mean, she just, I mean, I've, she's never behaved this way. I mean, she turned into this psycho, B-I-T-C-H. Mom, don't get mad. I didn't cuss. I spelled it. Anyway, y'all side note on that. The reason why I'm saying that is because... My uncle, he'll come in and look at, at my channel, right? And I did this one video where this female kept chiming in, type, saying she wanted to talk to me and that I was beautiful and she wanted to see me pictures. And I'm like, you know, um, I, you know, I said thank you, but you know, I'm not gay, and you know, um, I'm, I, I've never been attracted to women, and you know, I like men. But you know, good luck to you. I hope you find who you're looking for. You know, but yeah, I'm not the one for you. But thank you though. I was very pleasant and kind about it. Then, while I'm sitting here doing a video, I'm doing a commentary. Then I get another instance message for her. She's like, please, you know, just let me send you some more pictures. And you know, I'm a lonely housewife, and I need someone to talk to. And I'm like. I almost said, I said, I said, this B, I mean, I almost called her a B-I-T-C-H and I caught myself when well, my uncle saw this. So he proceeds to get on the phone with my mother, like, girl, turn on, on, on the internet, cussing, calling people B-I-T-C-H and talking about being gay. So what do you think my mother did? What did you think my conservative, proper mother did? Naturally, she gonna question me about it, right? Melvin tells me, um, you're doing videos? on the internet and that you're calling people bitches and she actually said it and 
you're talking about being gay what's going on with that I'm like, what in the world? I said, first of all, fuck Mel Uncle Melvin's gonna tell my business. He need to, you know, at least you're gonna talk about my business. Say it right. You know, tell it tell it right. But don't be calling my mom starting stuff. And then when she confronted him about it, and we both confronted him about it, he got mad at her because she said something to me. I mean, it was just anyway, so I digress. That's why I said mom I didn't cuss, but actually I just did, didn't I? Oops. My bad. Anyway, back to, I'm getting off track here. Y'all, it's late here. I'm kind of tired. I've been watching all these episodes. My sister's called me and been on the phone with her for a couple hours. My One of my best friends from California called me. I was on the phone with her for a couple hours. And it's late and I'm tired. So please forgive me if I'm rambling. And I hope this video don't go too long. But anyway, back to the episode. If he was on the plane holding, gripping her husband's hand like the plane's about to explode and she's trying to keep herself calm by listening to music and stuff and finally they get to St. Bart's and I guess I don't know what the hell she was, she must have been expecting like the red, a red carpet treatment, I don't know y'all what was she expecting, was she expecting them to be waiting at the door clapping like yay, Aviva you made it, yay thank you, you know, I, I don't know what she was expecting you guys weren't gracious and you weren't welcoming me and you need to thank my husband for getting me here. You need to thank my husband for getting me here. And I, I think they were all like, what the hell? On top of fact, we were just having a good time. Did y'all notice the first five days they were all there? Everyone was having a good time. Everyone was getting along. There was no drama. There was no chaos. Everything was just cool and copacetic. They were all having a good time. And the minute, the minute that drama Hurricane arrived, Hurricane Aviva, when Hurricane Aviva arrived on, at St. Bart's, all hell broke loose. And then... She had the audacity to tell Ramona and Sonia that they were white trash. Those two women, I don't think they've ever, I, I mean, the way they reacted was like, what does that mean? They didn't even know what white trash means. It was like, maybe we are white trash. I mean, they were trying to, I mean, they were perplexed. And then Hurricane Aviva got the nerve to, they, they owe me an apology. I mean, you need to go up there and apologize to my husband for not being a good, I mean, there should have been a banner or something up. You guys know how difficult it is for me to travel and stuff and what, what it did for me to get here. I mean, it's like, really Aviva? Are you serious? I mean, OMG. Then she's talking about how I'm educated. I, um, I went to law school. I went to Vassar. I can speak several languages and I know. I mean, really, who cares? I loved when Sonia said, was, I mean, she was at, uh, Sonia was at that cooking party um, with Luann and her man, Jack, and uh, Ramona and her husband, and uh, Sonia, and the lady who was putting on the cooking, men can cook. Uh, uh, party um, she said you know you would think of me maybe if she had paid for her own education maybe she you know wouldn't be so um, so rude or uncouth or I don't know something so y'all know what I'm talking about point well made uh, Sonia maybe she'd be more appreciative or, or maybe she'd use it maybe if she had paid for her own education then maybe she would have been smart enough to use it well said Sonia Thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking. And then, um, what else? Let me see. And then she wouldn't let it go. They were, even poor Heather was like, I am so tired of hearing about a Viva, a Viva, a Viva. Every time they go somewhere, Viva's talking about how horrible St. Bart's was and how horrible Ramona was and how horrible Sonia was and, and how um, um, uh, disrespectful they were. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, the same things you're saying about them, how disrespectful they were and, and how unclassy they were and, 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 and how they were bullying you. You were doing this same things that you're accusing them of. I mean, I, I, I just, I used to like Aviva, but after this episode, I just, I mean, somewhere over the Atlantic, she lost her mind. She, she, she clearly, I, I think she lost, she lost her mind. I mean, she was just horrible there. And then, y'all, what was, why did Carol, I mean, one of the girls made a comment about 
planes crashing and stuff and, and that upset Carol because you know Carol's um, uh, you know Carol's cousin John Kennedy and John F. Kennedy Jr. his wife and his wife's sister perished in a horrific plane crash and so um, you know anytime you're talking about planes and crashes and stuff you know that's a, a, a sensitive subject for her so one of them made a reference to that and she immediately gets emotional and she gets up and she starts crying it's really sad but did y'all see her go into a um she went into some boutique or something and asked for a tissue and she blew her nose and then put the tissue on the counter and said thank you and walked off I'm like did she just at first I was like, okay, I didn't see this right. So I had to run it back just to make sure I saw what I saw. She asked for a tissue, blew her nose, and instead of saying, do you have, where's the paper basket so I can throw it in there? She blows her nose, <laughs> puts the dirty tissue on top of the counter and says, thank you, and nonchalantly walks away. Um, yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was unreal. I just... Did y'all see that or am I going crazy? Let me know. Anyway, we shall move on. Anyway, uh, let's fast forward from, from St. Bart's and go to the next episode. They're back in New York. Um, Sonia's talking about, you know, meeting with her husband and stuff. And, of course, Viva's meeting with everybody to... I'm thinking she realized this. This is what I'm thinking. I think Viva realized that she was acting horribly, but... Because she feels victimized, that she got victimized and that she was treated horribly and that she didn't get the reception that she felt that she deserved um, is why she, one, didn't apologize for her own behavior and chose to place the blame all on uh, Ramona. So, I mean, she every time she went somewhere, it was, it's all she talked about. And I agree with Heather. Heather's like, you know what? Let it go. I mean, for, for someone who has such a horrible time, why do you keep reliving it by talking about it? Just rise above it. You know, it, it is what it is. It happened. Let it go. And she even, Heather even got to the point where she was like, you know, it's always me, 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 me. You know, you have to stop doing it. And she's... Aviva got the nerve to say, it's so difficult to be... A, oh, no. It wasn't Aviva. It was... Carol who said it's interesting how it's very difficult to be around egotistical narcissistic self-centered women that was such an awesome statement I know I, I, I didn't say that word verbatim what she said but I mean she's right she never she didn't have an idea that she was that's who she was going to be surrounded by was a bunch of egotistical self-centered narcissistic women because that's exactly what they all are and Aviva definitely has a sense of entitlement like you know all the attention has to be surrounded around her but I mean except when it comes to her legs she don't want you to recall she don't want you to call any attention to her leg she don't want you to call any attention to the to her amputated amputee and none of that don't don't call any attention to that but you are allowed to call attention to her she does like being the center of attention especially when it comes to she's put herself in a situation to come there and hang out with you guys and then of course she didn't get the reception that she thought she should get and so she's pouting like a big baby. I can't wait to see the next episode because I guess her dad's going to be coming into the picture and I guess he's going to be commenting on on how his daughter was treated and his, he going to put his put hands on Ramona and, and looks like it's going to explode or erupt. But oh my god. <laughs> Princess Aviva is just out of freaking control. I mean OMG. She definitely owes Ramona and Sonia an apology about calling them, um, you know, white trash. That was just so horrible. You're white trash, you're low lives, you're unclassy, you're, I mean, she said some really horrible things and I agree with Sonia. Sometimes, you know, once you say things, you know, they can't be taken back and at least now Sonia knows where she stands because um, Aviva was probably thinking that the whole time. It's just she's using St. Bart as an, Bart as an excuse to really tell them how she really feels about him. So I don't blame Sonia. She goes, you know what? You and I aren't friends. 
I don't need you in my life. You know, why kick some person who's down, who's all, you know, who already is down even lower? You know, I don't need that. And she put her, I loved how she put her hat, she put her hat on and she put her coat on. And she's like, I don't need to be here with you no more. We ain't friends. You know, peace out. Itch. I didn't say mama, I said itch. Anyway, although I'm already in trouble. But anyway, yeah, you know what I mean? So, oh. Y'all is, oh, I don't know how this is going to end, but man, I, I can see it getting way worse before it gets better because this Aviva chick is, people are going to start isolating themselves. She's going to find herself in a corner all by herself. Her relationship with her husband's a bit, I don't know, weird. She can't go anywhere without him. Something's not right. Something is not right in that camp because that's, that's kind of weird, don't you think? I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not married or anything, but I mean, I would want to spend time with my husband, but I wouldn't want every freaking second of the day because I know she doesn't work. So, and I'm assuming he does, or maybe they live off her money. I don't, her parents' money. I don't know. But um, it seems like they spend quite a, a, a lot of time together. But it's just something's not right there. Let me know if y'all agree. Anyway, y'all, I'm done rambling, Amy. I came in and did my um, commentary. Um, I apologize if I was rambling. It's really late here. And um, I got to get up early in the morning. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, y'all, thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think. If you think I'm right about the, the, the I think I kind of touched on like three episodes. The last three, 12, or 13, 14, and 15. Um... And let me know what you think. And if I left something out, try me to let me know that. If you like the this video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you don't thumbs down, please let me know why. What did I say wrong? Anyway, um, and if you like what you see, you like my channel, you like to support it, subscribe. Um, anyway, y'all to the next video. Peace out. Love y'all. Bye. Good night. Um, Project Spare Time. Love you. Thanks for your videos and commentaries. Um, Till we talk again. Peace out. Bye.